Dear all, good day. Today is my 51st lecture under the banner of Marine Quest Solution on the subject matter which I had broadcast earlier. Today, the lecture number 51 is uh, about the SPM maneuver, that is, whilst approaching the SPM, the SPM maneuver. Now, I had broadcast this lecture earlier during uh, when I started this channel but uh, as you know that I do ge uh, keep getting the feedback from my colleagues to explain few other aspects and much more details so in order to do the justice with the subject matter I am broadcasting this video where I will explain you something known as the catapult maneuver that is when the tug is made fast to the vessel which is approaching the SBM. In this particular example the the vessel I have taken, subject vessel I have taken is a VLCC which is approaching a SBM and the weather uh, uh, scenario is that the wind is uh, northwesterly about eight knots and the current is southwesterly and the current is uh, at the speed of two knots now we will begin with this as and how we go with the slides I'll keep on explaining each and every aspect on the subject matter thank you <clears throat> now first and foremost the vessel under the advice, that is when the SPM, the vessel is going to approach towards the SPM, what all, what all the preparations and the preliminary things which are to be, you know, carried out and the vessel shall be prepared by, uh, as far as the vessel is concerned, all those things we will try to talk about in a chronological order. The vessel under the advice of pilot or the mooring master will head slowly towards the buoy, usually stemming the tide or and current or, or heading into the wind now whichever is the stronger in case the wind is stronger and if the terminal allows to do the maneuver that is up to them but finally it's a master's call and if the current is stronger that is the that is the direction into which the vessel should head that is stemming the tide or heading into the wind whichever is stronger in this particular case, as I have explained earlier, that the wind is hardly anything, it's about 8 knots. But the current is stronger, which is, uh, you know, setting southwesterly at 2 knots, the speed, the rate of current is 2 knots. Now, what I said a few minutes uh, ago, the same thing, whichever is the stronger, that is also normally the direction in which the whole string is leading, and the tug is used to nudge the bow into the position. So whichever the forces, the external forces are stronger, the vessel will utilize that and head into the wind and or stemming the current whilst making an approach towards the SPM. Of course, in case there are some restrictions about the subsea lines, then the whole modus operandi, you know, differs. Now, in the present scenario, the current is setting southwestly 2 knots and the wind northwestly 8 knots, which I explained even recently also. There are a few points to ponder, which of course goes with the ship handling. That is, on a right hand screw vessel, the hose will be connected, will always be connected onto the port side. The reason being right hand screw. The hose will be connected on the port side that is in case of any emergency contingency that you stop the loading or discharging to the SPM and hose is disconnected and you you know disconnect uh, the vessel from the bow and give a stern kick and off you go because the bow will can to starboard on a stern rev. But on a left hand screw the whole modus operandi is different on a left hand screw vessel the hose will be picked up on the starboard side of the vessel because of the transverse thrust. Uh, you know as far as the left hand screw and or the right hand screw is concerned so this is the point which is to be pondered that I asked few uh, you know 
gentlemen, a few of the colleagues, that why do you think the horse is always picked up on the port side on an SPM manoeuvre? Mm, I will be very honest, not many of them could answer satisfactorily. That is the reason I put this point, point to ponder. Of course, with the exception, there are one or two places in the world where they still connect the uh, hose on the starboard side for a for a right hand screw that is because of the restrictions they have maybe because of the depth or because of the uh, way uh, the because of the configuration of the subsea lines or the pipes how they are passing in order not to have a you know catastrophical thing by vessel touching those pipes down and or the depth uh, depth restriction whichever may be there but yes there are two terminals i'm aware of it but 99.99 percent of times on a on a right hand screw vessel the hose will be picked up on the port side and uh, on a left hand screw vessel the hose will be picked up on the starboard side now how to approach the uh, spm and what are the maneuvers that's what we are talking about in the present situation as uh, you can see the the wind is coming from northwestly, 8 knots, and the current is 2 knots, and the vessel is going to stem the tide because this is the strongest force what you have. At this point in time, the distance of the SPM is 3 nautical miles, and the vessel, subject vessel, what we have taken is a VLCC, and the speed over ground of the vessel at this point in time is approximately 6 knots. The distance from the SPM is 3 nautical miles and at this point in time, the speed over ground, I'm talking about the speed over ground or the speed she's making good while stemming into the current is 6 knots. Now at this point in time, the vessel should be aligned on the head towards the SPM, always keeping her within one point on the port bar because this is a right hand screw vessel I've taken. So when you're heading into the SPM, you uh, the vessel is heading into the SPM. She will keep the vessel keep the SPM slightly onto her port bow. Let's say within one point. Ensure all preparations and communications with the terminal are in order. Of course, that is to be done. Pilot is already looking after. From the vessel's point of view, the main engine steering. Test wide 33 CFR 164.25, that is USCG requirement, or as per SOLAS Chapter 5 Regulation 26, are strictly adhered to, that is prior to you approaching the SPM or your pre arrival test. But it's a good idea to do all the tests once again, you know, before you commit yourself into the maneuver, and I believe most of the masters must be doing it. And a responsible officer should be standing by fore and aft along with the crew as required. As per the uh, requirement, the chief officer goes forward and most likely second mate or the duty officer goes aft, aft for the connection of the tug forward to get all the preparations done in advance before you are making a, you know, a maneuver towards the SPM. Phase number two, when the vessel is approximately two nautical miles away from the SPM. At this point in time, the vessel uh, will have uh, will is two nautical miles approximately from the SPM. The tug should be connected on the vessel aft center lead in discussion with the pilot. The master shall be aware of the tug's bollard pull as well as the tug's horsepower respectively and the vessel's speed over ground at this point in time is maximum 5 knots. Within 5 knots, it should be in fact within 5 knots, maybe 4 knots, whatever is uh, possible, you know, whatever speed with which she could steer away. Uh, but definitely not to exceed 5 knots when you're connecting the tug. So at this point in time, time the tug T is getting connected into the onto the vessel and the vessel speed over ground is maximum 5 knots at this point. Phase 3, the vessel speed over ground that is after the tug is connected is 3 to 5 knots. At this point in time we try out the catapult maneuver. Now catapult maneuver is something 
which not I believe many pilots or the masters do it or many a times with due respect without prejudice many masters are also not aware of it and pilots also you know do not do it because maybe the time constraints or whatever the reason may be I'm not going to go into that now what is the catapult maneuver the catapult maneuver is when the vessel speed over ground is approximately three to five knots approximately the vessel in this case the VLCC stops the main engine and wheel is amidships and the distance from the SPM at this point in time is one and a half nautical miles so I repeat the distance of the SPM at this point in time is one and a half nautical miles as you can see in the drawing and of course the weather weather conditions are same the the current is two knots and uh, that is what the vessel is stemming keeping her uh, the vessel is keeping the SPM always fine or you know close to her port bow and the uh, uh, the current is two knots and the wind is eight knots so vessel speed over ground at this point in time is three to five knots and at this point we try out the catapult maneuver that is when the vessel speed is uh, three to five knots the main engine is stopped and the vessels uh, you know helm wheel is amidships now once this these two things are done at this point in time still she is making good some speed let's say about three to five knots what I said earlier the pilot tells the tug to pull the vessel astern the vessels main engine is stop speed over ground is three to five knots approximately the pilot tells the tug to pull with the maximum thrust of course at one precaution of course which should have been taken into consideration at the time of connection of the tug that the hauser uh, on which the tug's uh, rope is connected on the scent lead is of very good uh, is in very good condition so main engine stop i repeat myself main engine main engine stop wheel amidships tug to pull vessel right astern with the maximum thrust when the vessel speed over ground reduces to approximately one to two knots the tug pull is stopped the reason being that is this is an emergency contingency measure as far as the catapult maneuver is concerned because if you go too close to the tug and you do not know what is uh, how your tug is going to behave uh, you know uh, in case uh, something goes wrong maybe the vessel's main engine fails or something else goes wrong will the tug pull or thrust or horsepower be sufficient enough to get the vessel clear of the SBM and that is the reason it is mandatory to try out the catapult maneuver what I've just shown you over here so when the vessel speed over ground now because main engine is stopped her speed over ground is between three to five knots and uh, vessels main engine is stopped and the tug is asked to pull give the maximum thrust once the tug is pulling of course the vessel speed is gradually coming down and in order not to lose the steerage when the vessel speed VLCC in this case speed is around one to two knots let's say approximately two knots the tug should stop the pull in other words that means your catapult maneuver is tested the tug which you are using is compatible it's good enough you see one thing is you can see the certificates of the tugs which masters should but when the tug is at site at station she's supposed to deliver the respected horsepower for what she's rated for but in order to ensure that her uh, the tug's engine main engine everything is working in order whether she would be able to you know uh, assist the vessel in case of an emergency contingency that is the reason this catapult maneuver shall be tried out this is in my humble opinion because I'd, I'd done it in past whenever I'd done the SPM maneuvers so the vessel speed over ground reduces to approximately one to two knots stop the tug pull and then we can start proceeding towards the SPM and once catapult maneuver job is finished we rev her up to approximately three knots of speed over ground that is the VLCC and tug will maintain the same thing respectively uh, you know not to pull the pull the vessel but maintain around three odd knots and maintain the safe distance so once a catapult maneuver is tried out uh, when the speed reduces to one to two knots 
the vessel proceeds towards the SPM. Now, that means it's something like, you know, about point, about position, what we do in our passage plan. It is something similar to that what I've replicated over here. So, once the catapult maneuver is tried out, the vessel proceeds towards the SPM with the approximate speed of 3 knots over speed over ground. Next phase. Now, once the catapult maneuver is tried out, in previous case, as we saw, the distance from the SPM was 1.5 nautical miles. In this case, the distance from the SPM is approximately half a mile. Now, at this, at this point in time, the vessel speed over ground is 1 knot. Main engine stops, stopped. The tug's rope should be full tight, no slack. In other words, tug should be in tandem to hold the ship while the ship's speed over ground is 1 knot. To draw the vessel closer to the SPM, short ahead kicks. In case, you know, in opinion of the mooring master pilot or the master that, you know, you need more kicks, but short, you know, spurts of the ahead kicks should be given to cope up. And in case the vessel is drawing a little more closer to the SPM, since we have tried out the, tested the catapult maneuver, the, you know, the tug would be your savior to ensure that, you know, everything is in order. So to draw the vessel closer to the SPM, short ahead kicks to be given until until the pickup rope uh, is passed onto the vessel by the mooring boat. So the mooring boat will be passing on the pickup rope. That is when the vessel is somewhere here. That is less than 0.5 nautical miles in this vicinity. The tug passes the mooring rope, uh, the rope to the uh, hawser to the vessel's bow. Once it's picked up. The chain is picked up and, you know, locked on to the stopper. And at, that's, at this point in time, the tug is just nudging her, the vessel, and trying to assist her to, to pick up the chain safely because during the final maneuver, your main engine is off, is stopped. So, once this is done, your chain is, uh, you know, picked up after the hawser and everything it's reeled through the the hawser is reeled, reeled through the uh, through the winches or windlass winches and then uh, the chain is picked up and it is put on the bow stopper your vessel is secured and and then of course the hose is picked up of course i'm not going into all those things my main job is to explain and discuss about the approaches and as far as the maneuvering or the maneuver is concerned this particular maneuver is concerned the caution which shall be taken into consideration once the you know SPM uh, the vessel is secured to the SPM and hose is picked up and connected, at all times the tug line shall be fully tied during this maneuver and the tug should be tending to the vessel whilst at SPM. The tug rope should be fully tied. That we'll see, you know, once the vessel is at the SPM, when do you think the vessel is coming in the close proximity of the SPM? And when sh uh, the duty officer or the master should ask the tug to give a pull, so that to, uh, for the vessel to keep the uh, uh, to, uh, to keep herself clear from the SPM. So, what we'll see now here, this is the same vessel which is tied up here. I've shown it this in the different pictorial presentation that the, when the vessel is, you know, this is 12 o'clock, and the tug is uh, key, uh, the tug line is fully tight. Of course, this is a good position where. Uh, the SPM should be within this much that is between 11 to 12 o'clock on the port side and 12 to 1300 uh, uh, 13 means 1 o'clock on the starboard side you are safe anything beyond that you have to observe caution what I have shown you in this video in this uh, slide that is between 11 and 10 it is caution but if it comes between up to 9 o'clock uh, you know, if your SPM comes up to 9 o'clock, means you are in danger. You may bang the SPM or you, may, you are uh, in the very close proximity of the SPM. And how the chain should be tended to on the vessel when you are tied up to the SPM, it should be this, that is, hardly any slack. It's, it's a kind of a catenary because of the weight of the chain. This is acceptable. This is how it should be. And in case it goes slack, the catenary gets disturbed the the uh, what do you call this the chain is getting pulled towards the SPM that is where you have to observe caution that is when you're coming between 10 or 11 o'clock on the port side that is when your SPM is 
or between 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock on the starboard side. And of course, if there is slack, no strain, then of course you're running into danger. That is the time when you're coming within, you know, between 10 and 9 o'clock on the port side and 14 to 15 on the starboard side. You are in danger. So, I've explained you this. Now let me try to show a kind of a simulation on the slide itself. This is the time when the vessel is 3 nautical miles and let's see how she is proceeding. Then 2 nautical miles, then 1.5 nautical miles and then she is tied up to the SPM uh, from 0 0.5 nautical miles and I've explained all the precautions which shall be adhered to. I hope for me broadcasting this lecture again after you know long time of span because of quite a few queries from my colleagues that what all precautions uh, you know shall be adhered to and what is a catapult maneuver I hope I have managed to explain you all in a nice and easy manner and I believe you must have perceived the correct thing so do please come back to me and do let me know how did you find it have you understood or not if not then please do come back I'll try to do something else as per your request and also please do like subscribe my channel also ask your colleagues to do to do the same like presently I'm also training quite a few pilots mooring masters uh, masters I'm also doing a lot of mentoring for navigation mentoring for a uh, few companies I'm on their uh, on their platform so what I'm trying to do is basically you know trying to impart whatever best we know as far as the practical ship handling or practical knowledge of the seamanship is concerned I uh, thank you all and I sign off thank you good day bye bye stay safe